So, how much can we trust digital photographs these days? Hmm. Welcome back, it's Jimmy Chang from Red35. Well, you know the significance of photography in the history of humankind. They document, they witness every changes that we have seen in the past and present, of course. And many of these photographs were used in, uh, uh, you know, in historic terms to basically as a witness, as some sort of evidence to show that something happened. And because of that, this also being used in many of today's trials. Well, in the past, things were a little bit simpler because they were analog. All you needed to approve is to look at the, um, the actual original negative and it's very easy to verify it. But not so in digital world. The reason I'm saying that is because I recently saw a YouTube video about the latest Amber Heard versus Johnny Depp's defamation case in the US. This particular case has highlighted a couple of things. The amount of photographs being used, and more importantly, about digital manipulations or doctoring the photographs. More specifically, about the two photographs that I saw in Depp's and Hurst defamation case. These two photographs were filed by Ms. Hurt herself, claiming to be separate photographs. Well, and uh, being a professional photographer who, po who photographed portraits for almost 16 years, um, I, I don't believe so. Well, what I did was I did a very simple exercise. I mean, although I don't have the original images uh, that they have in the court, uh, but I did a quite very quick screen grab. So forgive me the, about the quality because they are not high res stuff. They're not proper photograph from, uh, from the evidence room. Simple Photoshop, you know, just put in side by side there and then I overlay them and to see that if there are any differences between them. And I couldn't see any. So to me, at least from what I saw, <laughs> that I grabbed from the, from, from the videos on YouTube. And I think that they are exactly the same photographs. Yes, the colors are different, but that's an edit. Yeah, even though she said that this photograph were not doctored or manipulated and, uh, or edited, use the proper word. And, uh, but she said that the, the slightly warmer photographs were shot with the beauty light on. I don't know if you're familiar with beauty light. Some of these uh, vloggers and bloggers um, uh, would use them, this sort of ring light and also makeup artists to change the light of the uh, of the face so they can see like we you know what it looks like um, in the photograph or filming environment. This this is a very common tool to use. However, having the, I said to you that I'm a professional photographer for so many years, I have used different lights, different 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 uh, settings on my cameras and everything like that. I could never ever taking two photographs identical you know i i have i can do like 20 frames per second uh uh um uh, 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 uh continuous shoot on the on the subject and i'll i I'll, I'll put them side by side you will see ever so slightly like movement there because people do move i move i can put it on a tripod minimize that but still there are a little bit of difference ever so slightly you really cannot uh, uh, say that, you know, uh, I see they are the same photograph. But these two, at least to me, identical photographs were shot separately with one, uh, well, so one with the, the beauty light on and one without. So to me, that almost, to me, is just not real. And, uh, but anyway, this is kind of like a, a, a thing that I want to talk about today and how trustworthy are today's digital images. And today I don't think you can trust fully in the digital world. And uh, unless uh, you can, uh, unless the photograph can be verified by an ind independent source that they are definitely, you know, real. <laughs> and uh, uh, the thing is like Lumina AI, Photoshop, Lightroom, a lot of these softwares nowadays have some sort of AI features that can detect subjects, they de detect the sky, they can detect anything, and then they either remove them, manipulate them, change them. You know, you can do all sorts of stuff these days, and they can be as real as you want. And that's the danger of it. So once the, the edited or manipulated photographs were published, 
Without seeing the original, how can you tell the one that you see on the screen or the one that's been published is the real thing? You can't. You really cannot. So that's the danger, I think. In the olden days, were really simple, right? We can look at the negative because that's the physical thing. That is a tangible physical thing that you can verify. You can't change that negative. You can scratch it. You can you can do certain things to to to, to do something a little bit. And in the printed version, you can airbrush something. You can do other things to make it better. But negative is the original that you can verify. Very simple. And now it's really hard. It's really hard. You know, digitally, you can still manipulate a lot of things. Metadata and all the other things can be manipulated behind the scene. And once it's been done a few times, you really can't trace back to what the original data were uh, 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 in the file. Uh, so this is, to me at least, you know, it cannot be fully trusted. It's helpful to see, but it's not going to be trusted 100%. So this is really interesting. I don't know about you, and uh, you can let me know your thoughts about digital manipulations, digital uh, uh, for the photography, whether to you, whether it's trustworthy tool or not. Um, I still love documentary photography. I still trying to be as true to myself. I tend not to change anything in the photograph. I follow the, the code of conduct of any, any uh, uh, documentary photographers. I do crop to change the narrative, which most of the uh, journalists around the world has done that before, especially during wartime. And um, we've, we've seen time and time again, people do cropping to do just that. Um, then, but I still prefer the old school photography using composition, lighting to tell the story. I try really try not to manipulate anything unless there's some really unsightly, like a, f a bug flying through. I just turn, it's just a little dot thing that I just remove them because it's unsightly. I might do that. Um, uh, but apart from that, I will leave the whole scene as is. But for commercial reasons, I can also understand that. For my standpoint is that, I mean, I've done portrait for my clients. If they said, oh, I don't like this spot here, can you remove it? I also do that. And also during weddings, if I do a group shot, for instance, and uh, I, I'm, if someone blinks, and I will try to remove the blink because I, I tend to take a continuous shot, about four or five frames for group shot. So I can make sure that everybody has their eyes open because there's always that one person who blink when I, when I shoot them. And uh, so what happened is that I just simply take a few shots and I will find the one that's not blinking and an overlay and just basically manipulate that particular person's and make it look beautiful again and um, uh, so this happens right and and uh, this is fine this is for commercial stuff and I'm pretty sure that you will agree if you like look work for magazines and other retouchers and things you would do the similar thing to make your photograph presentable simply because it's commercial but in the documentary uh, a sense in the more historic value terms even court evidence I don't think things should be touched I mean, in Ember's case, you know, these two photographs, she could have just used one, just one photograph. And why submit it two and claim them to be different? And then, um, so it's, uh, she might actually forgot about that. She has submitted two identical photographs, which edited differently. Um, but, I, you know, obviously I don't know anything about that. Um, uh, but what, this is what puzzles me, you know, there might be too many photographs uh, uh, for this entire trial. And, uh, it, it, it's simply that's got messed up, you know, simple. She couldn't even remember which one was submitted, which one was not. Uh, but there you go. When you submitted too many and you really something, just simply forgot about it. And <laughs> anyway, let me know what I thought about digital manipulations, editing, and the weather uh, of digital photographs can be trusted these days, um, especially from a historical evidence point of view. Um, that for me, you know, like, this uh, Amber Heard and that case is uh, is for a little bit for f fun thing for me to just watch a little bit of it. I don't really follow it, uh, but as soon as I saw that photographs, I just had to make a video just to have, talk about this particular point I want to raise today. Um, that I think it's interesting, and uh, uh, as as much as I love photography, I just want to hear your thought about um, the, the whole kind of um, uh, uh, changes in today's digital world compared to the analog days. It will be interesting to see how you think about it. Anyway, uh, thumb if you like this video and also sub if you want to stay in touch with all things photography, filmmaking, and of course, Michael Forthert. See you later. Bye for now.